Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Sanjay Mishra of Intelligent. Uh, just wanting to run through some of the steps in configuring Celometer for billing. Um, not a whole lot of new content here. It's really what I'm, what I'm doing is pulling together material that is available in multiple sources with the intent being that uh, uh, from a billing perspective where you're wanting to collect all data for all entities all the time, uh, this gives you all the elements that you might need to, uh, to enable that uh, level of data collection for Solometer and, and then feed it up into uh, something like Taligent OpenBook. So Taligent uh, OpenBook is a billing solution. We rely on Solometer data uh, for billing and chargeback. And uh, a, a correctly configured Solometer environment is essential to our health and well-being. And so uh, we felt that there was value in putting this information uh, out there and, and sharing it. Um, a couple of different steps in getting Solometer up and running. Uh, obviously, the, the first uh, uh, essential step would be to install the Solometer components. Uh, there are several of these. Solometer, in its uh, default configuration, runs on top of a MongoDB database. And so uh, the MongoDB database, the API server, the central collector, uh, the Solometer uh, collector, the common services, the compute agent, uh, the alarm notifier, uh, and then some, some uh, 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 the core components and the command line interface uh, via Python into, uh, uh, into the Solometer environment. So uh, to install all these components, if they weren't already installed uh, in, say, a Red Hat environment, uh, you run the command at the bottom of the screen and, and everything is, is, uh, uh, is laid down. Uh, these components can be distributed across your uh, environment, so you can choose uh, which uh, you, you can separate these across multiple nodes within the OpenStack cluster, uh, but this installation just assumes that you're installing everything on one machine. Um, once the uh, once the Solometer components are installed, then uh, there's a, uh, there are a couple of steps that you have to complete to configure Solometer to work with Keystone. So there's having a Keystone user that has the appropriate configuration, uh, and then making the details of that user available to uh, the Solometer services so that they can then use uh, th those credentials and connect into, uh, into the, uh, the Keystone environment and, uh, and to the other services. So uh, setting up uh, the environment to run the Keystone command. Um, in this, in our example, we're creating a user named Solometer uh, with an appropriate password and, and an email address uh, as, as appropriate to your environment. And then there are a couple of roles that need to be added to that user. So that user has to have a reseller admin role and also needs to have the admin role, which is on the next, uh, next slide. Uh, in our experience in working with these environments, we find that uh, this is one of the things that tends to go awry fairly frequently, that uh, either the Solometer user doesn't have the reseller admin role or uh, through some other changes that are made to the environment, uh, that role gets dropped and then Solometer loses its ability to, uh, to authenticate against Keystone. So just a point to note that uh, verifying that the Solometer user has the reseller admin role is, um, uh, is the one of the uh, uh, first steps maybe to, to uh, troubleshoot the environment. Uh, as uh, uh, additional steps, so just like any other service that you might add into the Keystone environment, uh, setting up a, a, a service endpoint uh, for Solometer itself and uh, the uh, step six and seven uh, outline what, what you need to run in order to do that. So now that the uh, Keystone components have been created, uh, then it's uh, a step of letting Solometer know what those components are so that they can be used by uh, Solometer itself and, and related services. So this is, a, it's really uh, the net effect of all these commands is to go through and make uh, appropriate uh, changes to the solometer.conf file uh, and set uh, the uh, auth host as the, the Keystone uh, host, auth port is the port that Keystone is, is listening on, protocol, uh, the admin tenant uh, name, the admin user, the user that we just created in the previous um, uh, uh, example, the admin password, metering secret, which we defined earlier. Uh, so uh, once these commands have been run, the appropriate uh, settings are in the solometer.conf file. And then we complete the configuration by making these available uh, to the Solometer services themselves. So all of this results in uh, Etsy Solometer, Solometer.conf being updated with, uh, with appropriate settings. Um, 
Solometer, as I mentioned earlier, runs on top of MongoDB. So uh, next step would be to configure Solometer to, to point to the appropriate MongoDB environment. In this case, I'm just uh, pointing to an instance on localhost. Obviously, it could be uh, uh, whichever host you have MongoDB installed on. Uh, one of the recommended settings is to enable the small files options uh, option for MongoDB. So the, uh, uh, the middle step outlines enabling that option. And then finally, start the MongoDB service. So at this point, uh, Solometer is installed. It's configured with its Keystone integration. Uh, it's up and running. And then the second step is to enable the integration between all the other OpenStack services uh, so that Solometer can receive data or pull data from, from these services. So uh, the first step, just configuring compute, uh, configuring Nova, uh, installing the, the, uh, the components if um, uh, they aren't already there on the compute node, um, setting the instance audit uh, 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 setting to be on, and so there, as a result of this, uh, Nova goes through and, and once per hour, in my example, uh, it'll produce a notification saying that this instance still exists. And so from an auditing perspective, from truing up uh, what the view of the infrastructure is, this notification can be used to uh, either provision or deprovision uh, things from a billing perspective. Uh, de determining what other uh, activity within the environment triggers a change. So, uh, you know, as a, as a VM is being created, uh, there's a series of notifications that get, uh, that get generated. As a VM power state changes, there's a series of notifications that gets uh, generated. And so the, the uh, final setting uh, enables those and, and makes them available for Solometer. Uh, setting the drivers through which these notifications pass up from Nova to Solometer. And then restarting the compute agent to have these uh, settings uh, uh, take effect and enabling them to uh, to run the, the next time that the agent is installed. Um, on the other services, there are uh, similar settings of either uh, configuring how notifications get sent to Solometer uh, or in, in some cases, yeah, so for the most part, uh, what these settings uh, consist of is just providing the mechanism that the uh, that Glance, Cinder, Swift, et cetera, are, are sending data back up to uh, Solometer. And with those settings in place, then you restart each of the, uh, the Solometer services. Uh, they pick up the, the new settings, and at this point, you should be up and running. So uh, just to reiterate, uh, checking that the Solometer user has the appropriate role in Keystone and making sure that that's uh, coming available and making sure that at the service level, the um, uh, settings that enable data from either Compute or Glance or, or uh, or Cinder, making sure that they're actually configured to send their data uh, over to, to uh, Solometer. Um, those are some of the common things that we run into in terms of changes that need to be made to the environment in order to enable this. And that's it. Thank you all.